back to the next video so in this video uh, i just want to talk about react native 73 so as you might know that react native 73 just got released yesterday and the most important feature which i was uh, i'm not really sure if i'm excited about it but like i'm really looking forward to it is uh, like first is uh, so these are the highlights for it like debugging improvement stable symlink i'm not really sure what this symlink is i think it's mostly related to javascript and then kotlin template for android is good and android 14 support is good and they have deprecated some debugging feature there is new architecture update which i'm really looking forward to so this is the uh, one and i think there is this pa babel package renaming and other breaking changes as well and react native cli changes so if you go to this new architecture updates th what they are saying that we continue the rollout of react native's new architecture to make it available to everyone in the open source community since one uh, react native 68 both the new renderer and the new module system were available to users to experiment and evaluate we want to thank the community for feedback we have received so far now this is important today we are releasing another piece of the new architecture bridgeless mode up until now when you enable the new architecture in your app the bridge would still be available to support backward compatibility with older components and modules however our vision is to fully sunset the bridge starting from react native 73 you can enable bridgeless mode which will disable the creation of bridge entirely now uh, okay together with bridgeless mode we are shipping a native module interop layer that will allow you to reuse your old modules when in bridgeless mode the render interop layer introduced in react native 78 has also been adapted to work with bridgeless mode as with the rest of the new architecture bridgeless mode is initially experimental so this is important we invite interested users to enable it and report any problems and incompatibilities you face in the new architecture working group now uh, so i have done a bunch of videos on the new architecture so how it will affect me i'm not really sure i did notice that i was using some uh, bridge uh, like this uh, bridge code dependencies like not dependencies but imports in my android project i'm um, i think i was using in my ios as well not in all my videos but i noticed like some of the new uh, some of the models which i was trying to integrate they were little complicated and i think i was falling back to uh, the bridge uh, uh, bridge even though i was using new architecture so first things first like uh, so they have also provided documentation for it for the bridgeless mode like not exact documentation but a github gist on how to enable it and how to get started uh, so if you are uh, so i will i'm planning to make a video on this on uh, so few videos on this like what i will do the first video is i will just enable the bridgeless mode and new architecture and i will just render a native module uh, like a net turbo module as well as a fabric module and try to see uh, what has changed uh, then I will try to do some other implementation as well like sending data from react native then receiving data from the native side to react native then sending continuous data from uh, react native to native and uh, native to react native vice versa okay uh, and if I find any issues then I will know which videos to update but it's very difficult for me to go through each and every video to know what is not working for you guys so in case if you're watching this now and you haven't started my uh, new architecture series like my react native playlist because almost all the videos are of new architecture and that's what i plan to do in the future as well but uh, what i would recommend is you enable the bridgeless mode as well along with the new architecture i will show you how to enable the bridgeless mode uh, in one of my future videos but also i will discuss in this video like how to enable the bridgeless mode so if you are enabling the new architecture you have make sure you enable the bridgeless mode as well and if there is any inconsistency or if the particular video or api is not working for you do let me know in that particular video comments and i will try to resolve those uh, as soon as i get some time so here if you say uh, see the uh, see the introducing bridgeless mode so in react native 68 we release the first pillars of the new architecture uh ready to learn what bridgeless okay what is bridgeless mode uh, prior to the new architecture the react native bridge was used to facilitate communication between javascript and native the bridge was a message queue for instruction like rendering views calling native callback callables or registered event handlers to name a few the bridge was limiting react native in its asynchronous design message batching and serialization cost 
Removing the bridge, a large part of the new architecture effort is to remove React Native's dependency on the bridge. With Turbo modules, we moved native calls of the bridge. With Fabric, we moved component rendering of the bridge. With Bridgeless mode, we are moving everything else. That is, rest of the React Native runtime error handling, global event emitters uh, of the bridge, and no longer uh, initializing the bridge. For more background on removing the bridge, see React Native EU, uh, the new React Native. I think uh, this video is uh, pretty old. Uh, I'm I'm not sure why they have uh, like given this video maybe just to get uh, give give us uh, like give us a gist of it like I think this video is from 2019 or something now support for legacy new models since we no longer have access to a bridge in bridgeless mode we have introduced an interoperability layer to continue support for legacy native model with the interop layer most legacy module registered with react native will be supported by the new na native module system so even if you are using so suppose if you are a library developer you will i think have to make some minor changes to add this interoperability layer see enabling bridgeless mode step 3 for more details on what is supported and caveat static view configs in addition bridgeless mode optimizes component rendering with static view config view config tell react what props and events a native component supports prior view configs were generated at runtime by analyzing a native components view manager okay okay this is fine okay enabling bridgeless mode now this is what you can try for if you are trying a react native but i think you will have to be at least on react native 73 to enable the bridgeless mode if you are still stuck on 71 72 uh, then you can ignore this bridgeless mode for now if your project has explicit dependency then update it to react native babel reset preset sorry and enable bridgeless so you inside your application main application dot kt here you will have to add this you will have to remove this and inside ios you will just have to add do this okay migrate like so that's it that's how you will have to enable the bridgeless mode not much uh, so which is good the interop layer ensures compatibility with legacy bridge calls however there may be some APIs that needs to be migrated. Review the following instructions. If you are uh, JavaScript register callable, uh, I don't think we were using in any of this and we were not using this so we can uh, avoid this. But if you are, then you might have to pay attention to this. Also, uh, as far as I can remember, I was not using anything of this get catalyst instance. Uh, then what else? old name okay I, I was not using this 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 destroy is destroyed initialize get js module has native module get native modules i don't think i was using any of this but i could be wrong like i have might i have won't be able to remember each and every method which i was using for APIs that return a bridge prior to bridgeless, bridgeless now returns a bridge lookalike object. Okay, an RCT bridge proxy supports majority of the uh, legacy bridge APIs. Uh, here are the APIs that it doesn't. If you are using any of the AB above APIs, please comment and let us know which one and what is your use cases. Bridgeless mode is a huge milestone for new architecture. Please let us know for any use case we may not be supporting today. Thanks. And I think uh, Mark, who is a, a developer or uh, for the React Native Vision Camera Library, has said I think he has asked some questions. So if you are curious, you can have a look at it. I think it is mostly related to C++ JSI module. Uh, yeah, and something related to React Native Vision Camera as well. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.